It's going to be about the plot type scatter plot. A scatter plot is used to visualize the relationship between two numeric variables. Now, the numeric variables could be uh, discrete or continuous. So I've tried to come up with an example here where the values, uh, a quick example that I'll do hand drawn on this plot below, where age is often taken to be discrete because we commonly measure ages in years and we don't give them decimal places. So often people think of age in years as a discrete numeric variable. But height, we often think of as a continuous numeric variable because we at least get down to inches. So we have like feet and some inches. And so it's a little bit more obvious that height is continuous. So first I'll fill out the example uh, below about adult growth, and then we'll go over to an example in R. So here we go. If we were to make a scatter plot about adult growth, where we are going to put as is commonly the common, uh, the explanatory variable on the x-axis and the response variable on the y-axis, then we would put points. We would make an individual dot for each observation in the data set. So let's say we have an observation of a two-year-old and they're just above, uh, I don't know, they're like one feet high. So we have two numeric variables where we record a numeric value for an individual's age and a numeric value for that same individual's height. And that shows up as the first dot on our plot. And for each next observation in our data set, we mark whatever value the explanatory variable age has relative to the response variable height. So let's say we had a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and gosh, I don't know heights of kids. Let's say they're three feet tall at four. That sounds good enough to me. So there is the second child in our data set. But say we also have like a 20-year-old, and at 20 years old, they're like five foot five or something. So that would be the third observation or third row in our data set. And so I'm just going to start filling these in to give you an idea of what a scatter plot will look like in the end. So here, this is a completely made up scatter plot of how we think the response variable height responds to the numerical explanatory variable age. And generally, we think as age goes up, so does height. So that's exactly what we see here. As age goes up, height is higher. That's saying that age seems to suggest that with increased age, we see increased height. Now, certainly, if this plot continued on, off into, say, like the 70s, we might actually start to see some sort of decline. And actually, probably into the late 20s, we probably see some leveling off. So if we were to imagine a line going through these data, we'd probably see something like this, and then maybe into your 70s, a slight tapering off. But so far, even without that imaginary line going through the data, this is a visualization of the relationship between two numeric variables. OK, let's try a quick example in R. We will use the library ggplot2. And I'm going to use a data set built into R named Faithful, because I heard at the first week of class that we had both um, biology majors and geology majors, or something close to geology as I remember it. So I've been trying my hardest to find geology data sets. They just don't seem to be as common as ecology-based or animal-based data sets. I don't know, animals seem more exciting than rocks, I guess. Not to some people, but maybe to statisticians. So anyway, this is the closest I could get to a geology data set thus far this semester. It's a data set that measures the waiting time between eruptions and the duration of those eruptions at the Geyser Old Faithful in Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. So it's a data frame with 272 observations and two numeric variables, eruptions and waiting time. So we're going to use ggplot. 
on the data set Old Faithful. We're going to specify the aesthetic. In my mind, if you wait a longer time, you will likely to see a bigger eruption. So I'm going to suggest that waiting is the explanatory variable and eruptions is the response. So I'll put waiting in the X position and eruptions in the Y position. And then I'm going to add the geometry of points. Now it's a little frustrating at first that I'm calling this a scatter plot and then using the geometry of points instead of say the geometry of scatter. But once you get to a little bit more intermediate style plotting, you'll see that the geometry of points more accurately describes what we want to do here. And it just happens to be the case that when there's two numeric variables on the axes and we put points all along this plot, we call that a scatter plot. But points is actually a very good description of the geometry that's going on here. So looking at this plot, we see a similar sort of connection as we saw with adult growth. As the waiting times go up, eruptions go up. So there seems to be some sort of positive connection between these two variables. What's also quite interesting is that it seems to show up in lumps of data. There's actually like one big kind of group down here. It's a little sparse in the middle, and then it's a pretty, pretty big lump of data up here. And now if you can imagine, if you just made a histogram or density plot of the variable weighting, what you'd actually see is a lot of data here and then kind of a trough or valley here, and then it would peak back up and give you a lot of data here. So a nice thing about a scatter plot is not only does it help us visualize the relationship between two numeric variables, it also, if you can look at it close enough and get comfortable with these plots, helps you visualize the relationship of each of the numeric variables. So let's see if we can look at the density plot for the variable weighting and see if we can understand where these two kind of humps of data are going to come from. So look at that density plot on weighting and I'm hoping you can start to see when you look at this flip back and forth between these two plots, you'll start to see how the density plot for weighting is really giving us this, okay, we call this bimodal. This is describing a distribution of weighting times for the Old Faithful Geyser that is bimodal, bi for two and modal for these humps. That's at least the words the statisticians use. So this distribution for the weighting times of the Old Faithful Geyser is bimodal. And that's similar to what we can see from the scatter plot between the relationship of weighting and eruptions. So while we're at it, let's just practice one more to see how scatter plots really kind of tell you something about the distribution of both the numeric variables together and of each of the numerical variables separately. So similar sort of thing, we get a bimodal distribution for eruption times. And if you can turn your head sideways and think of a mode here and then a valley and then another mode here, you might be able to visualize the eruption times as a density plot. So this was our first example of a two variable plot. And this is gonna be our stepping stone into more intermediate plotting where we try to start layering on with um, extra aesthetics or geometries, more variables into one plot.